Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Pierre. This is Simple Homebrew. I'm doing a thing for wine lovers today. I have I haven't really touched on that for quite some time, so I thought I'll do a bit of a video on transferring wine to bottles. If you're interested, stick around. So what I'm doing today is actually transferring a wine I made. I got given this wine by a subscriber and uh, they live out in Church away. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate it. I'm not going to mention your name. Um, it's an out-of-date wine, but it was very close to in-date. So I didn't film it. I actually made the wine, got it ready, and I'm here now to bottle it. So what I'm going to do is place sanitizer in the measuring jug and chuck all my corks in there. I've got 30 corks. I'm going to put them all in there. I've got 30 bottles. Not all of them are going to use corks though, some of them are going to be reusing the original lids. But the corks have to be sanitised beforehand, so I've got to do that about an hour before I actually bottle them. So I'll do that right now. So just open up these corks, they're, um, I bought them from the local brew shop. Uh, an economical, good quality composite cork. Uh, new technology has made these corks better than ever. Agglomerate corks, agglomerate? Yeah, a resilience and offer a good seal when using in hand corking and you'll need to soak them in a warm sterilized solution of mangrove jacks no rinse sanitizer oh, it's not mangrove jacks but it's no rinse sanitizer that i'm using uh, a professional 30 minutes uh, for 30 minutes so 30 minutes is a go can open it i'll cut the lid off the top off and pour them in i have already made a pre-made solution of sanitizer which is 5.1 to 1,000. I'll just fill it up until they're soaking. That's good. I'll set them back. They're going to float, of course. But, yeah, you know, that's just how it is. They're going to float in there. I'll set that in there now for 30 minutes, like the instructions say. That will get them a little bit soaked with, um, with sanitizer. And then once they have had their soaking, we will start doing your ring house. Right now, I have this little beauty here. This is my um, boiler next to my sink so I can wash all my bottles out. Um, so we're gonna have a good mix of hot and cold water so I can get nice warm 40 degrees or so, 50 degrees, just so I can clean out these bottles, make sure they're clean before I start, and then I can sanitize them in the sink over. So what I'm gonna do is fill this sink up with warm water, and my next sink on the right-hand side is going to be sanitizer. All right, let's get into it. So we've um, well, we've transferred the uh, warm water. It's about, I reckon, about 40 degrees Celsius. A uh, bit warmer than me. I'm 37 degrees. I'm supposed to be 36.9, whatever it is. But anyway, what do you do? It's warming up in here, which is great because it's such a cold day. It's just fogging everything up, but it doesn't matter. I'm doing this. All right, so now I need to clean each and every bottle, and every bottle has to have a, a brush or a something put in it just to clean out. First, I'll soak them into the sink of hot water with a brew cleaner in it. Just an alkaline brewery cleaner. Um, it's all purpose, you use it anywhere. Uh, basically, I'm just going to fill up each bottle with it. I let it soak a little bit so it destroys the bacteria. So a little bit in the bottle like this, and uh, it'll just eat away any, anything that's set in there. You see, this one's got a little bit of goop. Hopefully, that will thin it out and dissolve it. And I'll get a little brush onto it, um, and the brush will help me clean the interior of the bottle itself. Here's something you might want to learn. Um, if you want to get the water out quickly from a bottle, like this beauty, full of water, you rotate it circularly so the air comes up through the centre and it empties out very, very quickly, just like that. Very slippery too. Do it again. So you rotate the fluid so you get a whirlpool and then you spin it and then 
it empties out very, very, very quickly. Just like that. Bit of a hint. Hopefully it'll help you out. That's all the scrubbing I'm gonna do. Um, as you can see, the water, look at the condition of the water, it's so bad. Basically, there was so much gunk and rubbish in those, but they're all clean now. So all I have to do now is rinse them in fresh water. I'm gonna use warm, fresh water because it's cold. And then I'm going to rinse them again in sanitizer. Probably something you guys haven't, uh, you don't know about. I have a little hose that I use for drainage. Just egg pipe, basically. I'll run it out to my drain. Just like that. Just a bit, uh, a bit of a cheap setup, but it's all I've got. I haven't got plumbers coming in doing all the work or anything like that. So it's the only way I can do it. So now I shall empty all the water out. It's only cleaning water. It's like a dishwashing liquid, basically. I'll give this sink a good rinse and then I'll fill it back up with hot water and cold water so I can rinse all the bottles. Just filling it back up with hot water, using the rest of the hot water I've got in my container, and I'll take my container off the bench. Uh, once this is empty, I'll put hot, cold water in as well, and then I'll rinse my bottles, and I'll leave all the bottles in the sink that I'm rinsing in, and fill the other sink up with about 10 litres of sanitizer so I can rinse all the bottles out using a, a tool like this. This one has to be rinsed out, it's actually quite... Um, there you go, fix that problem. <laughs> So yeah, all I'm doing is using up the rest of the hot water. I only did 20 litres of hot water. This will be the catalyst to push the bottles down into to squirt clean fluid up inside the bottle to get all the excess soap out. Now something I do is um, when I finish with my equipment like this, because it's hot and it's still full of steam and hot water, I'll give it a quick wipe with a drying cloth. And what happens is, because it's so hot, it evaporates whatever's left in the pot and it will be perfectly dry by the time I put it away. I'm just stirring up the uh, corks, just to make sure they are all getting covered. I know this is monotonous, but I'm putting all the cleaned bottles, which are spotless inside now, and rinsing them all with warm, clean water to get all the soap out of the bottles so is that when I do sanitise them, there's no soap residue left. Well, I have the little plunger, and basically it's soaked in water. It's sitting in the warm, clean water, and I'm plunging into the bottle. So it squirts up inside the bottle and rinses it internally. Take that bottle, and I'll put it on my bottle tree. Don't know if you can see it from there. I think you do. And I'll do that with every bottle until they're all rinsed. So right now I've put in 10 litres of water and I've mixed in 15 mil of Atomic 15, which is a foaming sanitizer, which will go on everything and, and really soak and coat all the surfaces of the bottles. Now, all I need to do is rinse them in the Atomic sanitizer and put them back on the bottle tree so they can drain a little and then I can start bottling. Okay, they can stay in there now. They're staying on the tree. Um, I finished rinsing them, so now I have to move the wine bottle. Um, I have to do it carefully because there's sediment in the bottom I don't want to stir up. Probably should have done this before I started rinsing or cleaning the bottles, but I shouldn't have too much of an issue. I did that without stirring it up too much. Um, basically what's happened is the wine has been sitting over for about three or four weeks uh, clearing out. And as it clears, it goes to the bottom. There's all the sediment on the bottom. You don't want to stir that up and get it in your wine. This makes for a much clearer wine. So it's now bottling time. Um, the sanitized bottles are draining 
So now I'll sanitize the siphon. Uh, basically I'm putting sanitizer right through the middle of it. I've already cleaned it, made it nice. As an extra added bonus, there is a little red dub on the end. Make sure you take that off so you can give it a good clean inside. Sometimes gunk stays in the bottom of it. Uh, the siphon tube as well needs to be sanitized internally. And there's also a pipe that you need to use because we're gonna inject it into the bottom. So I got my bottling wand. This is a, a spring and a pin setup. Um, the little pin has a little rubber o-ring on it to seal it and that will go in the end of here. So it'll help with excess wine getting out while I'm doing it. Um, small end at the bottom, big end at the top so it butts up against this so it pushes against it when it's inside the actual holder. Pop that over, seal that on and then I will put the silicon pipe that I've got which looks like it probably won't fit over that. Will it stretch? It will probably not. You know funny enough I've got it on what I did notice though, this tube is actually not clean. So I am going to get quickly get a tube, a brush for the tube, which I have. This little bloke, and I'll just give it a quick dip in sanitizer and I'll throw it in just to give it a good, it needs a good clean out sometimes. We need to make sure we keep things clean so we don't get it all in our new made wine or, or anything we do really. Perfect, look at that. That works a treat. Hey guys, any products that I've been using today that you are interested in, click on the link in the description box down below. I have an affiliation with Kegland and anything you click on will help my channel grow and give me a bit of change to allow me to keep brewing like this. Thanks. So as you guys can tell, at this point, everything is spotless. Uh, it's clean, ready to go. Uh, I've got a couple of bottles with a threaded lid and the rest of my cork. I have about 19 or 20 bottles of corked ones and about four or five, maybe even six bottles of uh, screw on lids. So hopefully I'll have enough wine to fill all the bottles. If I don't, I'll put them in a, another carboy I've got to sort it out, but this should work really, really well. What I'm doing now is just getting them ready to siphon. The siphon isn't going to go into the kit till I'm ready, till I'm completely prepared, ready to go. And then we can start siphoning into the bottles. Now the bottles that are going to get the lids on, they're going to be drank first. So I'll have that, uh, I'll have them drunk within a couple of weeks. Um, most of the time, a, a set of wine like this will last me a year. Uh, I share it with people, give people bottles. They give the bottles back to me most of the time. I haven't had all of them given back to me. So I am down a couple of corked bottles, but that's just how it is. So we're just about ready. I'll just put this bottle in, it's the last one. That's all room I have for this lot. And we're gonna start setting up the siphon, siphoning it into the bottle. So when I do pump fluids through this for the first time, I will First, rinse out as much sanitizer as possible. Not that the sanitizer will do you any harm at all, because it's no rinse sanitizer and it's fine. The reason why I do it is, you know, it does add flavor to something you don't want it to add flavor to. Okay, so I'm gonna put this tube into my wine, which is, of course, of course you know, it's fully sanitized already. I'm probably gonna repeat that constantly. And pop it into the end very, very gently, because I'm really scared to stir it up. So in it goes to the bottom. That little red stopper will stop the sediment coming into the tube. It'll actually allow the tube to sit in that. So now we can't move this. We need to make sure we don't. And I'll start it by pressing down on that. Well, it looks pretty clear. But I also need four hands. You just gotta press down on your little plunger, which is down on the, in the sink at the moment because I don't want it to um, go into the bottles and we'll start the siphon. There you go, the siphon has started. I'll just let some go through. As you can see, just let some go through. You can see it's nice and clear, ready to go. And then I'll start my first bottle. We'll do the first one on the left and we'll work our way up and down. So in it goes. It's siphoning fine. If you can see here, nicely siphoning into it. I'll fill it up until the fluid reaches the rim of the actual top of the bottle. And then I'll pull it out. So that gives me enough air in there 
for sufficient um, aging. So right here, ready to go. Flew it out, grab it. See how it just drips a little into the next bottle. That bottle is full. It has sufficient enough, a sufficient amount of air in there just so that we can let it age using a little bit of oxygen that's in there. And then we'll go to the next bottle and do it so on and so forth. I won't bore you with this one. I'll put you on fast speed. I'll get these through and done and then I'll talk to you later. Okie dokie, so we're at this point now, I'll get that light out of your face, might be able to see a bit better, there we go. Uh, basically, we're at the point of uh, corking. The other, looks like seven bottles, uh, are going to be drank first because they're screw-on lids, they seem to not last as long. Uh, the corks though, do seem to last a little bit of time, so they're in a soaking container still. Um, I will now get the corker and cork the bottle. So this one here has been set up for the last time I did it. Hopefully it's pretty right this time. So I'll do a first recork, first recork. That's new. <laughs> I'll do a first cork. I'll grab a cork. Now these are different. Um, it's got writing on it, it's a VH7. You load the cork, uh, writing down in the end here. The little plunger will push the cork in and squish it small and then push it into the bottle. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. So open the end, pop it down. The gripper will grip the neck. Ah, it would be good if it did it really well, but last time I did this was very, very, that was really good. That went really well. Okay, we're on it. <laughs> I'm sitting here talking, wondering this is not gonna work well, but I've already set this up. So it should be a quick uh, piece of work to get it all done. Load her up. Pop it on, take the time. And just like that, perfect. All right, I'll do all these bottles and get back to you as soon as I'm done. I'd be smart enough to actually taste it before I bottled it. But nah, nah. All the time, I will bottle it, open it up in six months time, and then I'll discover whether it's good or not. Doesn't matter. I'm not a big uh, connoisseur of wine. Whoa! Uh, and they, you probably guys you probably didn't see that. I'll, I'll let you see it if I do. I press the on button of the fill meter and I forgot to take this little tag out of the hose injector and it just sprayed me big time. What's gonna happen? I just wanna rinse out the corks, so empty the corks. I wanna rinse out my sink um, because of the sanitizer that's left in there. Because the sanitizer will dry uh, and it'll leave a white film in your, in your items, in your sink and anything else you wanna protect. So, we will try that wine in a sec, and then I'll talk to you about what we did. Haha, <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. So this has been sitting around for probably three, three weeks, four weeks clearing. It's meant to stay for two weeks, but I left it for four weeks, I reckon. It's been sitting for a while. Been very busy. Uh, as you can see, it was very monotonous doing bottling. So here's my glass. I will pour it. It's looking pretty clear. 
Now, this, remember, this is the end of the actual, or the base, or the bottom of the barrel, as you would put it. But that's it. Quickly turn this light off so you can see the colour of it. Yeah, probably can't, can you? Hang on, where's the phone? Put a light behind it from my, my phone. Look at that, you can see how clear it is. It's nice, it's um, done pretty well. Let's have a look at that, yeah. It's got a bit of fogginess around. It's actually quite cold um, in here. It's getting a bit humid because I've done some heating and stuff. So the coolness of the air is reacting with the, uh, sorry, the coolness of the wine, which is probably about seven, eight degrees Celsius, is in the air, which is about 15 degrees in here at the moment because the sun's come out and it's all warmed up now. All the windows are unfogged now, so it's really good. Anyway, I'll smell it. it remember, this is not aged properly yet. Oh, it smells good. This is an out-of-date extract from a subscriber who do kindly donated it to me. Uh, he knew it was out of date and said, would you like it? And I said, yeah, look, I've done out-of-date stuff before and it's come out pretty good, so I'll give it a go. This is out of date by what I remember, about two months. Um, the yeast was, was still good, I think. No, I bought some yeast, uh, EC118, uh, which is wine yeast, and I replaced it just in case. It could have been sitting in hot areas and that, that's what I did. So it's got fresh yeast with the old wine extract. I am going to taste it now. Mm. All right, so it's kind of dry. Uh, very flavoursome though. It's actually nice. Um, it's got a lot of tannin, flavouring, um, fruity. Not, not what, it's very dry. I'm pretty sure it fermented down to about 13%. Um, it's clean. It tastes really clean, not gritty. No uh, carbonation in there, which is great. Which stirring it up during the process gets rid of that carbonation. You need to do that. Mmm. This is quite nice as it is, just today. Uh, last time I did this brand, it wasn't so good. This one is very nice. Um, now, I used tap water. Uh, but I do have a filter, a carbon filter on it, so it cleans the chlorine and chloramine out of your water a little bit, mostly, uh, and any kind of impurities that might be in the water. We keep the minerals in the water, which will mix with the wine well. Hopefully the minerals in our water here is pretty good because it comes off the mountains. So the, the water is clean anyway. They just put chlorine and chloramine in it to just get rid of any kind of bacteria that might be there. And my filtering system seems to be working. All my processes now, using filtering rather than chemicals, are coming out well. I'll just keep experimenting, see if I can improve the quality of my drinks. But this is very, very nice. I'm very happy with it. As you saw, with the process of bottling these, it can be a bit monotonous, uh, but you do get a great result at the end. And I appreciate you guys sticking around for this. I had fun doing it. I do have fun brewing, and this was free, given to me free, of a subscriber. I don't want to mention it just in case. I really salute you. Thank you very much. This wine turned out very, very nice. Well worth it. Okay. That will be drank, probably not all today, but it will have be will be done, dealt with. I'm gonna put a vacuum cork on it and put it away so it doesn't get uh, exposed too much to the oxygen in the air. And I will put those bottles away for six months just to age them a little and then get back to trying to drink them later on. Now these wines that I make last me a year or more. I do give some away and I do drink a fair bit of it too. Very nice, very good hobby to have, and I really love doing it, and I love making wine. Guys, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, thank you to my patrons for looking after this channel like they always do. I have many patrons who pop in a dollar, and it's all it costs you. You get ad-free videos before I release them. Uh, if you're interested, check it out. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. See you later.